I usually talk with you just as you're getting on the bus or just you're getting off the bus. Today, you're not on the bus, but you're on the bus trip. Exactly. And thank you for taking a moment to talk with us. Oh, my gosh. An honor, as always, to do this. I, I'm, I'm really curious. You were at the Republican convention yep. last week. You're at the Democratic convention this week. Yep. Um, is there a different feel? Is oh, it's night and day. It's night and day. I mean, we just got here this morning, but walking the streets, there's so much more joy. There's so much more engagement. There's like a, a feeling of hope. And the crowd is so much more diverse, I have mm -hmm. to tell you. In Cleveland, we had nothing but serious, grim, tight faces mm -hmm. uh, hurrying past or stopping for lemonade but not sure they could trust it kind of feeling. Mm. And the thing that I think was most distressing is they had a hard time thinking of hope. Mm -hmm. and they couldn't tell us what gave them hope. Mm -hmm. But what we find here is people bubbling over with hope, bubbling mm. over with opportunity mm. and ideas and engagement and passion and yeah. life, in short, life. I mean, so many people at the Republican convention told me, oh, they worry there's not a good candidate to pick. <laughs> and here at the Democratic convention, we hear, we've got two great <laughs> candidates, and I want one, and yeah. I want another, but, it, but there's engagement. So if you, if you were orchestrating uh, this convention, what would be the most important thing you would tell them to do? Oh, uh, the, the thing that everybody needs to do, whether they're at this convention or not, is get engaged, mend the gaps. But people think you have to be in the political party and all the structure. No, 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 no. We just have to talk to each other about what matters to uh, each one of us mm -hmm. in our hearts. And then together we can figure out how we move forward. I realized on this trip is that our political life is like a big circle, like these round tables we've got here. And some people sit on one side of the round circle and look across. They'll see something different than the one on the other side of the circle. But we're all at the table, so we've got to talk to each other. You know how concerned I am. You are uh, Interfaith Alliance is about religious freedom. Oh, absolutely. Say absolutely. a word about the importance of religious freedom for both of these conventions. Well, I, I mean, one thing is I think that nuns on the bus is that both conventions that we're able to use our faith voice to speak to values and to speak to what matters. Too often, I think we uh, politicians may want to co-opt us or to suppress us mm -hmm. because we don't agree with them and or that because we agree with them they want to trot us out. The fact is that we come from a place of belief and faith. I just got asked if I, I would be willing to be a, a surrogate for Secretary Clinton and, and I said well the fact is uh, my, I speak for mending the gaps. Right. I don't speak for a candidate. If I can say that the assessment is between the two candidates we have right now, who would mend the gaps? Well, I've got an analysis of that. I'm happy to give it. But it's out of faith that we have to be free to express the values and then help people make their decisions. You, you actually have a superior that would affirm what you just said, <laughs> and you also speak for that superior. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. The back of the bus says, Pope Francis, uh, is a quote from Pope Francis saying, it's necessary to have a vibrant politics. That's what we're doing. Thank you so much, Simone. Oh, you're welcome. You're great. Yeah, Thank you. Always. Really appreciate it. Thank you.